Hello friends, welcome to To The Point. In this session, we are discussing about parliamentary committees. We know that the parliament is a huge body and it will deliberate effectively the issues that come before it. But the functions of a parliament is different and it is complex and it is very voluminous in nature. In order to handle the issues effectively, the parliament is assisted by a number of committees which discharges its duties. Generally, a parliamentary committee means a committee that is appointed or we can say that the committee that is elected by the house or it is nominated by a speaker or chairman. A committee works under the direction given by the speaker or the chairman. They present all their reports to the house of the speaker or the chairman. And also the committee has a secretariat provided by the Lok Sabha or Rajya Sabha. Parliamentary committees, they are classified into two types, standing committee and ad hoc committee. Standing committee, it is said to be a permanent and that is constituted every year periodically and this standing committee it works on continuous basis whereas the ad hoc committee it is said to be a temporary committee and once the task assigned to ad hoc committee is completed and then the ad hoc committee gets dissolved ad hoc committee it is further divided into two types Enquiry Committee and Advisory Committee. Under the Enquiry Committee, they are constituted from time to time either by the two houses which is in motion or by the speaker or chairman to inquire into and report on specific subjects. For example, like Railway Convention Committee, Joint Committee on Stock Market Scam, Joint Committee on Security in Parliament Complex, etc. On the other hand, advisory committee, they include a selected or joint committees on the bills which are appointed to consider and report on particular bills. When a bill comes up before a house for a general discussion and that bill, it is open to that house to refer to a select committee or a joint committee. A motion to this effect it has been moved and adopted in the house in which the bill comes up for consideration. Standing committees. Depending on the nature of the function that is performed by the each committee, standing committees can be classified into six types. Financial committee, departmental standing committee, and committees to inquire, committees to scrutinize and control, and committees that relates to day-to-day -day business of the house and housekeeping committees or service committees. Financial committees, it is further classified into public accounts committee, estimates committee and public undertaking committee. Public accounts committee, it was set up in the year 1921 under the provision of Government of India Act 1919. At present, there are 22 members in the financial committee. In that, 15 are from Lok Sabha and 7 members are from Rajya Sabha. The members of this committee, they are elected by the parliament every year. And the members are elected according to the principle of proportional representation by means of single transferable vote. The term of office of the member in public accounts committee is one year. A person who is a minister, he cannot become a member of the committees. The chairman of the public accounts committee is appointed by the speaker and the chairman can be either from a ruling party or from an opposition party. The function of public accounts committee is that it will examine the annual audit report of Comptroller and Auditor General of India. The Comptroller and Auditor General of India, he has to submit three reports. That is a report on accounts 
and a report on finance and a report on public undertakings the public account committee it examines the money spent on any service during the financial year for which a excess amount is spent than granted by the lok sabha for that purpose the estimates committee the first estimate committee in the post independence era it was constituted in the year 1950 on the recommendation of john mathai he was a then finance minister originally the estimate committee had 25 members but it was raised up to 30 members in the year 1956 all the 30 members from estimates committee are from lok sabha they are elected every year and the ministers cannot be a member of the committee they are elected by the lok sabha according to the proportional representation by the means of single transferable vote the chairman of the estimates committee is appointed by the speaker and that chairman he can be either from the ruling party or from the opposition party the main function of estimate committee is to examine the estimates that is included in the budget and suggest the economics in public expenditure hence estimate committee is described as continuous economic committee committee on public undertakings the committee on public undertakings it was created in the year 1964 on the recommendation of krishna menon committee initially the, the committee had 15 members 10 from lok sabha and 5 from rajya sabha and at present it has 22 members with 15 members from lok sabha and seven members from rajya sabha the members of this committee they are elected by the parliament based on the principle of proportional representation by the means of single transferable vote and the term of office of the members in public undertaking is one year a minister cannot be elected as a member of the committee and the chairman of the committee he should be only from lok sabha and a rajya sabha member of the committee he cannot become a chairman of public undertakings the main functions of this committee is they examine the reports of comptroller and auditor general of india on public undertakings and they also examine whether the affairs of public undertakings which are being managed in accordance with the sound business principles departmental standing committee on the recommendation of rules committee by lok sabha departmental standing committee was formed in the year 1993 the objective of this standing committee is to secure more and more accountability for the council of ministers at present the members at present 24 departments are formed and under each department 31 members are present and out of 31 members 21 members belong to lok sabha and 10 members belong to rajya sabha the members in the lok sabha they are nominated by the speaker and the members in the rajya sabha they are nominated by the chairman a minister cannot become a member of this departmental standing committee the term of each standing committee is one year totally out of 24 committees eight committees work under rajya sabha and 16 committees work under lok sabha committees to inquire it is further divided into three types committee on petitions committee on privileges and ethics committee the committee on petitions it will examine the petitions on the bills and on the general matters which are of public importance committees on petitions it also entertains the representations from the individuals and the associations on the matters that pertains to union subjects 
the lok sabha committee consist of 15 members whereas the rajya sabha committee consist of 10 members committee of privileges this committee is semi judicial in nature this committee examines the case of breach of privilege of the house and its members and it recommends a appropriate action ethics committee this committee it enforces the code of conduct of the members present in the parliament it examines the cases of misconduct and it recommends appropriate action thus this committee is always engaged in maintaining discipline and decorum in the parliament committees to scrutinize and control this committee has many subdivision committees like the committee on government assurance to examine the promises that are given by the ministers on the floor of the house committee on subordinate legislation this committee it examines and reports to the house whether the powers to make rules and regulations and bylaws that are delegated to the parliament or that is conferred to the constitution to the executive or that is being properly exercised by it committee on papers laid on table this committee examines all the papers laid on the table of the house by the ministers to see whether they comply with the provisions of the constitution or that is related to the act or rule committee on welfare of scs and sts this functions to consider the reports of national commission for scs and national commissions for sts and it examines all the matter that relates to the welfare of scs and sts like implementation of constitutional and statutory safeguards working on welfare programs etc committee on empowerment of women this committee it was constituted in the year 1997 and it consists of 30 members 20 from lok sabha and 10 from rajya sabha this committee it considers the report of national commission for women and examines the measure that is taken by the union government to secure the status dignity and equality for women in all the fields joint committee on the office of profit this committee will examine the composition and character of the committees which are appointed by the central government state government and union territory governments this committee recommends whether the person holding this offices should be disqualified from being elected as a member of parliament or not committees relating to the day to day business of the house business advisory committee this committee it will regulate the programs and time table of the house it allocates the time for the transaction of legislative and other business brought be- before the house of the government committee on private member bills and the resolutions this committee it classifies bills and allocates time for the discussion on the bills and the resolutions that are introduced by the private members and we can say that this committee is a special committee of lok sabha and it consists of 15 members including the deputy speaker as its chairman rules committee this committee it considers the matter of procedure and the conduct of business in the house and it recommends necessary amendments or addition to the rules of the house committee on the absence of members this committee considers all the application from the members for the leave of absence from the sittings of the house and it also examines the cases of members who have been absent for a long period of 60 days or more without permission even this is also a special committee of the lok sabha and it consists of 15 members and finally we are here to discuss about the housekeeping committee or we can call it as a service committee and this consists of 
four committees they are general purpose committee house committee library committee and joint committee on salaries and allowances of members general purpose committee it considers and advises the matters which are related to the affairs of the house and it does not belong to any of the parliamentary committee house committee this committee it will deal with the residential accommodation of the members and other amenities like food medical aid etc library committee this committee it will consider all the matters that are related to library of the parliament and it will assist its members in utilizing the library services joint committee on salaries and allowances of members it was constituted under the salary allowances and pension of the members of the parliament act 1954 it frames rules for regulating the payment of salary allowances and pensions of member of the parliament consultative committees this committees they are attached to different ministries or we can say a departments of the central government they consist of members of both the house of parliament that is from lok sabha and rajya sabha the minister or the minister of the state in charge of the ministry will act as a chairman of this committee this committee it will provide a forum for informal discussions between the ministers and the member of the parliament regarding the policies programs of the government and the manner of their implementations in general this committee it is constituted after the new lok sabha is constituted that is after general election for the lok sabha in an other way we can say that this committee gets dissolved when the lok sabha gets dissolved and it will be reconstructed upon the constitution of the new lok sabha the members in the informal consultative committee they are also constituted for the railway zones member of a parliament one who belongs to the area which falls under a particular railway zone they are nominated to be the informal consultative committee of that railway zone see you in the next session with some other interesting topic thank you